Good morning. And welcome to those of you uh, joining us from home. Uh, I believe the sound is working today, so uh, glad you're here with us. Uh, um, well, on the eve of what I think is really the, the new year with school starting tomorrow, I just hope uh, tonight in your prayers that uh, will you pray for all our crossing guards and bus drivers and custodians and lunch staff and administrators they have had, I mean, and teachers and students and parents and um, just keep uh, anyone involved with any activity in school in your thoughts and prayers as they uh, prepare to go back tomorrow under, under weird circumstances. So thanks for your prayers in advance as we begin the real American uh, New Year tomorrow morning. With that, uh, Brian, you did have an announcement. Good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to announce that this coming Wednesday is going to be our first choir practice, choir rehearsal in such a long time. It's been a hiatus, but we're excited to get back. I've heard from many of you returning members how excited you are. I'm excited also. We're going to do it in a way that's safe, we'll be masked, and we'll be in this space, the sanctuary, a large volume space to make sure that um, we, we have the ability to distance and things like that. But I want to let you know, if you haven't sung in the choir before, you're welcome to. One thing I love about Trinity is I come into this sanctuary for services and everyone sings. It's such a great feeling to hear all those voices. I know they're in here. And so if you've been thinking to yourself, you know, I would love to get back to it singing in a choir. Please, you are welcome with us. It's Wednesday at 7 o'clock here in this sanctuary. Thanks. When's the first service that the choir will be back at? After Labor Day. After Labor Day. Is that Sunday the 9th? Yes. Awesome. Excellent. Well, let us take a moment of, uh, a moment of silence. Just thinking about this past week, the missing of the mark, the sins. We want to hand over to God, seeking His grace, His mercy, and His forgiveness. Amen. Please rise as you're able. We confess our sins before God and one another. Eternal Lord, we live in a world of anguish, and our sin only multiplies our suffering. Our despair discourages others. Our hopelessness paralyzes us from carrying out your work in the world. We pray for mercy for strength, and for our faith to be restored, knowing that all good things come from you. Amen. God will indeed make all things new. Our Creator knows, hears, and answers the cries of our hearts. Despair no more, for the one, for the one who comes in power also comes in love, and death has no dominion in the world to come. Receive our Lord's promise of pardon, renewal, and peace which knows no end. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. Christ's peace. Christ's peace. Christ's peace. Christ's peace. Christ's peace. Christ's peace. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, your strength far outstrips any earthly power. May we put our fears aside and our trust in you, in whom our hopes will not be disappointed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Thanks, Fia. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Hey, sweetheart, do you want to turn around? Because I have some pictures to show, and I need your help to tell me what they are. Feel like a good, a good plan? Thank you. All right. This is going to go right over your head. Well, maybe not your head because you're smarty, but you can be a good help. All right. Symbolism. <laughs> Ready for that? Symbolism, okay? I'm sure you talk about that a lot at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about missing the mark. Um, 
but I think we can make this work. So symbolism is like a picture that has a meaning. So Fia, let's show, uh, Fia, let's show off. What is that? Some rain. Some rain. Very good. So this could be like the symbol for rain. Okay. What about this one? What do you think this is? A Christmas tree with the star on it. Okay, so that's like the symbol for Christmas. You could look at that and think that. All right, here's another one. What do we think this is? People. People. Very good. All right, this will be the true test. What about this? Hmm, yeah. Okay, uh, Paige, what about this one? <laughs> Recycling. See, I taught you well all these years. Hot diggity. Okay. So here's a little story we got. You ready for my story? Yeah. Okay. Let's listen. So this is a story. Um, in the Bible lesson today, there was an envelope. Okay. It was like a sealed envelope. And it was sealed. It was closed with stickers on it. It had a bunch of stickers on it. Okay. And listen to this craziness. Every time you pulled a sticker off the envelope, a horse came out. It says it in the Bible, a horse came out. Is that not the craziest thing you've ever heard? A horse came, not one, but a whole bunch of them. Yet the first one that came out, it was white. It was a white horse. And that's like everything pure and clean, right? Like Alexis's sweater, pretty white sweater. And the goodness. All right, here's the next one. So they say you have as many minutes as their age. She's two. Um, the next one that came out was a red horse. And some, sometimes, you know, the white horse came out and it was all the purity. God's purity, God's wholesomeness. Next one that came out was a red horse. Believe it or not, there are some people out there that don't want to hear what God has to say through the Bible. And sometimes they get mad. That could be a symbol like that. Red mad. They're blowing their top. Well, the next one out of that, the next sticker that came off, the next one out was a black horse. It really, this is truly happening. I didn't make up the horses. You'll hear about it later. Um, was a black one, and sometimes people don't know about the goodness in the Bible, and they're kind of left in the dark. So they're kind of like a symbol like this. They're left in the dark until the little ray of light from the Bible comes out at them. And our last one is a pale horse. And the pale horse is something that has a little color, not a lot, right? Love it. Um, a pale horse has a little color, but not a lot. And people who know the Bible, but maybe don't choose to live exactly by it. So kind of creepy, sorry. But it shows that a little bit comes out, but for the most part, it's pale. They just choose maybe not to have God in their life to the fullest extent. Yep. Now, I got one last thing to say, Fia. You ready for this one? We've explained the horses. They all came out of the envelope. The stickers have been taken off. The horses are all out. And then you have Jesus, who leads you to the stream. And we do our full circle. Why do you think he goes to the stream? Baptism. Very good baptism. You got that. And God is always right there to wipe away your tears because God takes away our sadness and our fear. And no matter what color horse you are, God's always right there with you. Kind of a unique way to get to the message, right? Well, that's this whole book of Revelations is kind of unique that way. Thanks for sticking with me. Thank you all. <laughs>
comes to us today from the book of Revelation. Then I saw the Lamb open one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures call out, as with a voice of thunder, Come! I looked, and there was a white horse. Its rider had a bow. A crown was given to him, and he came out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, Come! And out came another horse, bright red. Its rider was permitted to take peace from the earth so that people would slaughter one another. And he was given a great sword. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature call out, Come. I looked and there was a black horse. Its rider held a pair of scales in his hand, and I heard what seemed to be a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's pay, and three quarts of barley for a day's pay, but do not damage the olive oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, Come! I looked, and there was a pale green horse. Its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed with him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, famine, and pestilence and by the wild animals of the earth. After this, I looked, and there was a great tumult that no one could count. From every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Sir, or who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple and the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat, for the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear 
from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit, the one who is present in our midst. Amen. You know, loss in our lives, loss that deserves notice and demands comfort, comes to us from many places, not, not only death. Loss in our lives, it comes from like leave takings. Leave takings as, well, we depart for college or as we depart for a new job and a home and leave beloved friends and colleagues behind. Loss, it comes to you slowly as you lose a loved one to Alzheimer's. Loss, it, well, it comes in the loss of employment or dignity. Loss, it comes to us from struggles with illness, both of body and mind. Loss, it, it comes from exhaustion of caring for special needs children and the occasional recognition of all the things given up in order to offer that care. Loss, it, it comes from disappointment at home or work or school, of dreams deferred or dashes or hopes dashed. Such loss comes at us from so many sources. And I think that there may be value this morning wondering together how this text could address those losses. So take just a, a brief couple moments and just think, think of some of the losses that you have experienced and seen others experience over the past year or thus far into the pandemic. You see, our scripture for this morning, the letter of Revelation, was written as a word of encouragement and hope and comfort to Christians who were struggling with enormous loss, enormous loss of identity and the threat of losing their independence and, well, even their lives. The saints in white are not only those who are robed in white and gathered in the church triumphant, but also each of you. As we too have come, or perhaps are still coming, through ordeals great and small. To those who are struggling to find hope and healing, Christ promised to wipe away every tear. Is a wonderful and beautiful word of promise that, well, at least I know I need to hear over and over and over again. And promises are just like that, right? They're, they're absolutely amazing because they don't just describe things. Promises have the capacity actually to create the reality they name. Kind of like when I promise my kids that, well, I'll go golfing when I get home from, from church. And by the time I get home, the golf clubs are packed and ready to go. <laughs> Promises come as a word beyond us that sets things in motion. Which is why promises are so important for us. And when we're stuck in grief or loss, there's little capacity to imagine, let alone move towards into a, into a future not dominated by these difficult realities. Christ promised to wipe away Every tear creates that, well, it creates hope that enables you, well, me anyways, to take steps forward into the future not defined by my past. 
But before we really get into Christ's promise to wipe away every tear, we should probably mention the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, huh? <laughs> I mean, is there any image that's more iconic or frightening than this? And perhaps the most misrepresented, too. You see, the opening of the scrolls is not... The opening of the scrolls is not the releasing of mortal destruction. It is the promise that the expectation of God's power is imminent. The opening of the scrolls is not the releasing of mortal destruction. It is the promise that the expectation of God's power is imminent. Very important. And we need to remember that horses were used in warfare. Donkeys and oxes, well, they did the farm work and they were the occasional transportation. Horses, when reading scripture, well, they were the F-16 fighters of the day. You mention a horse in scripture and it's war, it's state, it's national defense, it's Roman imperialism. The first horse represents the threats to security that come from outside. The first horse is laughing at Roman imperialism. It's laughing at Roman peace. Namely, that the Romans thought that the world should be grateful to, to them for providing peace. I mean, what a joke. Rome or any other nation that has accomplished peace through fear and law and order doesn't last in history over and over again. They come and they go. The first horse suggests that even the most powerful national defense cannot overpower the Almighty God. And this horse is a very hopeful word to a community that's being oppressed by a foreign national power. The second horse suggests that even the rule of society cannot withstand the coming of Christ. And the third horseman, well, he holds a pair of scales. Now we in America see scales like that and I think that we immediately think of Lady Justice. But these scales aren't about justice, these scales were used for commerce then. And the issues, well, it's the threat of economic hardship. The third horse suggests that, well, even wealth cannot withstand the forces of famine and drought or poverty. And the fourth horse is followed by Hades. It's the, the Greek word for the realm of the dead. The fourth horse suggests that even life itself cannot withstand the inevitable death, for, for we all will die. Now the vision of these four horses of apocalypse, these, the vision of the four horses of this unveiling, well, it would have been beautiful words to those who were oppressed, yet designed to bring repentance and faith to those who were doing well. These visions are designed to unsettle the complicit reader, like those of the seven churches, remember at the beginning, like those of Sardis or Laodicea, who might be lulled into a false sense of security by social and economic conditions that are favorable to them. There is nothing in this world that can withstand the power of God. And this does not mean that we should fear God. Quite the opposite. We can trust in a God that can topple hierarchies of nations and society and wealth. For those oppressed and starving and poor, this is a word of hope to be sure. Then an amazing combination of imagery, the, the Lion of Judah, the, the Lamb Jesus, now becomes also the shepherd, tending to the flock, leading people to springs of water and wiping away all their tears. 
We, you and I, were led by the Lion of Judah, led by our shepherd lamb. God's redeemed people will come through the tribulation into God's new promised land. Now, who is able to stand? Who is able to stand was the rhetorical question left dangling at the end of that dreaded sixth seal after the four seals of the deadly horsemen and the fifth seal's depiction of Rome's victims under the altar. By the end of chapter 7, all of us, all of us as God's people can confidently answer, with God's help, we are indeed able to stand. The end of our reading today in chapter 7 will envisions a countless multitude from every tribe and language and nation dressed in white robes, worshiping God day and night. And this is not, this is not simply a picture of what it will be like in the future when we all get to heaven. Not at all. I mean, although this vision unveils a portrait of the church's future, it also reveals what we are to be here and now. The church is called to embody God's promised and preferred future in the present world. We're to live as a sneak preview to what is to come. And that's exactly what we're doing here at Trinity. And not only on Sundays as we gather, but seven days a week. But back for a moment to your losses that deserve notice and those that demand comfort coming from many places. Again, the words of Revelation before us this morning were written as a word of encouragement and hope to comfort Christians who are struggling with enormous loss. And whether you want to admit it or not, we are certainly living in a time of loss, considering the pandemic and the Delta variant. God sees you. God knows the grief that weighs upon your hearts, the depression or addiction that oppresses you. God sees the challenges you are facing and the uphill struggles that you are contemplating. When you struggle with loss, when you struggle with the world, you are not being faithless. This is a concern that I've heard countless times come, I've, that have come across in my pastoral ministry that when we struggle or doubt or fear that we're somehow letting God down. But that's just not true. It's not true at all. You know, Martin Luther, in the middle of his reforms, once took up the matter of the, the marks of the church, that is, you know, preaching and sacraments and all that. And he left it pretty much unchanged, but he added one mark. And that's the mark of struggle. You see, he figured that where there is faith, there is also always struggle. And that's helped me remind people that struggle and doubt and feeling overwhelmed and wondering if God is out there, that these aren't signs of failure or lack of faith, but are actually a testament to profound faith as we wrestle with such deep questions and will thereby take God seriously. And if this weren't true, I mean, well, we wouldn't have so many lament psalms in the Bible. And so when we feel at our most low and wonder if we've lost our faith, God names you, God names us among the most faithful. Blessed are those who struggle. Now, I promise you, or better yet, God promise you, 
that Jesus will indeed wipe away every tear from our eyes one day. And in the meantime, Jesus sees our struggles and knows our grief and our losses. Indeed, Jesus has borne them on the cross and bears them with us even now. The Christ promise to wipe away every tear is so darn beautiful. We probably all know what it's like to be a little kid that is hurt for some reason. And it comes crying to mom or dad and jumps up on their lap only to have mom or dad wipe away their tears. And the reason for crying is soon forgotten in the presence of the love and care of mom or dad. This is the image that's painted for us about heaven. God himself, the almighty loving father, picks us up and sets us on his lap and wipes away our tears. He smiles at us and our sorrows and our struggles no longer exist. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Okay. 
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church the world, and all those in need. Lord, there will come a day when suffering of any kind is no more. Hold your vision and promise before our eyes that our hearts might be cheered in the sure knowledge of your deliverance. Triumphant God, hear our prayer. When disaster strikes, we are tempted to panic, judge, or despair. Help us to see the world through your eyes, to sow seeds of healing and reparation wherever it is in our power to do so, and to share the good news of your victorious love with everyone. Triumphant God, hear our prayer. As summer draws to a close, let us not forget the rest and renewal we enjoyed in you. May we seek you often and find refreshment from our tasks, even as we also find satisfaction in the work that you have laid before us. Triumphant God, hear our prayer. You guide us to springs of water and wipe away the tears from our eyes. Bring healing, an end to suffering, and a wellspring of hope to all who cry out to you, especially those we name now. Triumphant God, hear our prayer. Blessed be the saints who have washed their robes clean in the blood of the Lamb. Encourage us with their faithful example and bring us with them into your eternal embrace. Triumphant God, hear our prayer. Hear the fervent prayers of our hearts and may blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let's 
the brim, our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed with the bread of life. Gather the hopes and dreams of all, unite them with the prayers we offer. Grace our table with your presence. Let us pray. We put our faith in your wisdom, O Lord, that you see and know all that we do not understand. We bring our offerings as a sign of our trust that you will bless our efforts and multiply them on behalf of the disadvantaged and despairing. Our hope lies always in your goodness and all-powerful love. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god through our savior jesus christ who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn We remember, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together as we are by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, we are always ready to come to your feast for fellowship, for refreshment, for forgiveness, and for relief from this world's concerns. Assure us that however we come to the table, all will be welcomed and all will be fed. As always, all people at all times are welcome at Christ's table here at Trinity. All is ready. Come to the Supper of the Lamb. Amen.
For you at home, please hear these words. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please rise as you're able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.